One of the things that people need to do is to eat greens that have readily available calcium. And in some northern countries, these would be foods like kale, which is, could be grown here in Italy, but I don't see it around very much. I have seen some, yes. Yes, we have. Yes, and collard greens are almost as good. And Napa cabbage, it's a white, white at the base, and it, it's light green. And these foods have calcium in them, but the calcium is very well absorbed. So people would be eating a lot of kale. And, and it, if you just took a leaf of it, it would be like eating a piece of rubber. It's not very easy to eat. But you, if for a salad, you cut it matchstick thin, cut it very thin. Or sometimes people will put some in their smoothie. So they'll make a smoothie of bananas and blueberries and kale. But you have to go through quite a bit of greens to get the calcium. They can, some other good sources of, are oranges and orange juice, and also figs and almonds and sesame seeds. So you can, you can definitely get enough calcium. Now on a vegan diet, you have the advantage also of tofu that's set with yes. calcium and uh, soy milk that's fortified with calcium. And uh, let's see, I don't know if there's some others. Water, yeah. calcium. Water with calcium. calcium, that's right. And there are fortified beverages in some places. And then you can get little bits of calcium from other foods. So that can make the calcium even up to the recommended levels. Now, the other important factor is vitamin D, mm -hmm. because in order to absorb calcium, we need vitamin D. So. And so we either need to use sunlight, and in Italy you have wonderful opportunity for that, but um, in some northern regions, northern Europe, in Canada, we have to rely on supplements in the winter our vitamin D levels drop. And it's probable in, for some people in Italy, they would even use sunscreen and be indoors a lot. So the vitamin D levels can drop. Even some people in Hawaii have shown low vitamin D levels. We used to think um, 20 years ago when I started writing books that vegans were protected. They didn't need as much calcium yes, as the recommended yes. levels. We thought because our protein intakes were lower, they were not too low, they were close to recommended levels, but we thought that protected us from calcium loss. And I was very interested at that time because I was, uh, I was becoming vegan. I've been vegetarian for 32 years, and I mean, have been now, but about 16 years ago I was becoming vegan. I have been very interested in calcium levels because as a woman growing older, I could track my own bone density, and I've had that done since I was 60. And when I was, or since I was 50, so I had my bone density checked and then have done that every two or three years since that time, so that's 18 years. And I found at first that my, I was losing at the menopause time. Of course, people always are losing uh, bone density at that time, but uh, I started to increase my calcium intake so that I would make very sure that my diet was high in calcium, and then I would also add a small calcium supplement, about 250 mm -hmm. per day, and one that included vitamin D because I'm in Canada. Yes. And so uh, at that point, my bone density leveled off, and then I made sure that I also did an hour of weight-bearing exercise a day mm -hmm. so that I would always be doing that. And my bone density has actually increased recently. How do you check very your slightly. bone density? Well, in Canada, we can have, you can have a, it's like an x-ray sort of thing, and they, they check at strategic points just to make sure. Is what, it expensive? Uh, in Canada, it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. It's part of the medical plan, and they would do that. They would be interested for someone who's vegan is and, and older. It is reliable. There are some tests that are not reliable. For example, checking your heel bone density, because mm -hmm. that's, that's not a strategic point like your hips. But mm -hmm. often the problem areas are your hips.
and so, can you do it frequently or just once in a while? Oh, you would just do it every few years. But, but uh, partly, I think, sometimes we, we do checks in order to see if we, we're on the right track. For example, someone might want to do a vitamin B12 check at a certain point. And once they know they have it working okay, then they, they can just continue. You don't need to con uh, repeatedly get it checked. Mm -hmm. Or the same with the bone density. I have figured out now that I need to take, I need to eat calcium rich foods, the ones we've mentioned. I need to take a supplement that includes vitamin D just to top up my calcium, really. And for vitamin D, because we don't get enough sunshine mm -hmm. in winter. And um, I need to do regular weight-bearing exercise. So that's walking or uh, riding a bike has some effect like that. Do an hour a day. Um, that has many health benefits. One is vitamin D.